before I came out, I, I talked to my director and I said, well, you know, what is what is our vision for asset management? And Greg and I, my uh, director, Greg Slater, and I came up with this, that our vision is to have a fully integrated program coordinated through a GIS-based system and comprehensive documented plans that lay out sustainable practices and adaptation to climate change. So being relatively new with asset management, as, as uh, was said, I was a water resources engineer and I mostly did plans all the time. And my head was sort of in the plant sheets and in the water and in the dirt. Uh, and I asked Greg, I said, what, what do we mean by this, you know, climate change and how we're going to, you know, incorporate this into asset management? And what he showed me was this next slide here that being a water resources engineer, you would have thought I would have had an idea of all the flooding that we have on, uh, on our maintained network. So as you can see, all these red dots, we have flooding all over the state, which is not really something to be proud of. But what's interesting is that we have the eastern shore over here, the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay, which is relatively flat. We have the ocean over here. We have the metropolitan urban areas around Baltimore and Washington. But then you go all the way out west, and we have the mountains. So we have a little bit of everything. And yet, we're seeing flooding all over the state. So it's not localized. Um, to one region. The next slide he showed me, oh I'm sorry, um, so we're going to have to account for and, and uh, adapt our assets for different things. Uh, temperature, increased precipitation during the spring months, uh, significantly warm weather. Just last week I woke up and it was 30 degrees in the morning and it was almost 80 degrees in the afternoon. Um, that drives me a little bit crazy but uh, so we have a variety of, for of forms of precipitation. Uh, changes in the storm frequency and intensities, uh, strong, stronger hurricanes, storm surge, increased 100-year event frequency, uh, and sea level rise. And just a quick aside, the storm surge is interesting. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember Hurricane Isabel, but I, was a vic I wasn't a victim, but I got hit by a storm surge. My house is about right here, and Hurricane Isabel came this way not knowing much about storms, they spin counterclockwise, right? So all of that, we didn't get any rain, but Isabel spun this way, pushed all the water up the bay and into my living room. Uh, but one of the things we talked about here was um, uh, sea level rise. This is an area in southern, this is about an hour south of DC and an hour east. And we have some vulnerable land out in this county, Dorchester County, Maryland. and. What's interesting is that a five foot rise in sea level is going to impact, well you can see the blue, it's going to be covered in water. Now, obviously we're not going to see a five foot rise in sea level instantaneously, but over the course of a few years we're going to start seeing incrementally um, rises in sea level. So we're going to have to account for that. Are, are we going to adjust some of the improvements we do, the expansion projects, system preservation projects? If this is what we're anticipating as part of climate change, um, are we going to address every flooding concern? Are we going to start upsizing culverts and things like that? Um, I don't know, but it's going to have to certainly be considered. Um, here's a, a, an overview of some of our uh, asset management programs. We don't have a unique program called points. I think it's a, a typo there. But basically, Bridge, uh, we just store our inventory and condition of structures. And they use that for funding optimization. Uh, they're attacking the structurally deficient bridges first, and then, this, as they say, uh, soon to be structurally deficient next. And what they're doing is they're going after the ones that are soon to be structurally deficient and doing minor rehabilitations, uh, such as painting, steel, and concrete repairs. Um, and I, you know, I've only worked for Maryland, but I, I, of all the programs we have in Maryland, I, I think that our bridge program is is unbelievable. Um, they're very efficient. They're very good with uh, meeting their budgets and reducing the number of structurally deficient bridges that we have. Our pavement program, we do annual pavement assessments. That helps us estimate the maintenance requirements. And we run an optimization routine to, uh, for best pavement funding levels. Uh, similar to Florida, I think you, you had said in Florida you're trying to shift some money out of the pavement program and into some of the other categories. We're looking at a, a similar uh, a similar approach. Our, the ride quality seems to be very good, and our pavement funding levels seem to be very high. Uh, so what we're looking at is trying to maybe shift some money into some other areas that, that have some needs. Um, but taking these asset management approach, 
helps us see where we would be if we shifted, say, $50 million out of the pavement program. What sort of um, decrease in ride quality are we going to see by making that shift? And I think somebody else said if we shift too much money out of it, uh, it might take us too long to catch back up. So there's some balance of how much funding we could move to other areas. Drainage, um, as a water resource engineer, I was uh, very involved with developing this database, uh, High Info 3 it's called, and it does the same thing. We put the inventory and the condition of the assets in there. Right now we're just assessing the conditions first and trying to come up with the funding second. Um, and most of our assets and our drainage assets are beyond the service life. So in my current role, I, I help manage the budget. So coming from drainage, I'm making a big push to try to steal some of the money from pavement and put it into drainage. But uh, they're, they're on to my game already, so I'm not allowed to move any money right now. Um, what we're currently working on right now is this asset data warehouse. And the vision of the asset data warehouse is to have all the assets integrated into one system. As we said before, um, we've got a couple different areas that are siloed, so um, High Info 3 doesn't necessarily work with the pavement management system, which doesn't necessarily work with the bridge system. Um, and we're going to integrate all of this within the uh, Maryland's Enterprise GIS system. Some of the stuff that's uh, getting put into the asset data warehouse right now are lighting, poles, structures, panels, barriers. Um, the future assets we're, we're looking at collecting first those that we have no data for. Um, so what we're doing, and then we're going to incorporate the assets that we have the data for. So right now we're, we're going out and they're doing line striping right now. Um, there's discuss and discussion of putting some green assets in there. Um, and once we get the asset data warehouse populated with these assets that there's no data for, we're gonna, then going to go work with the bridge people and work with the drainage people and try to get their information in there as well. Uh, some of the initial data collection um, techniques are just field crews using the GPS, uh, in-house crews using busy data um, collected by our ARAN vehicle, and the surveyor software package. It was funny, I was leaving work the other day and there was a young lady sitting in one of the cubes and it was about uh, 5.30. No, actually, if, if anyone at State Highway sees this, it was 7.30. Um, uh -huh. But I asked her, I said, I said, what are you, I said, what are you doing? And she, she showed me exactly what she's doing. And she's basically using busy data. So that we're using existing data that we already have. And she's going and either verifying lighting structures, sign structures, or she's collecting new data that's not already been collected. And she's just, you know, young engineer uh, sitting there, you know, and she can do it either from our office, her office, or at home. So it's, it's, really taking a, a good look at what information do we have and how can we get that from other databases and into our um, asset data warehouse. So I, I thought it was a really good idea and I don't know who came up with it but uh, she's, she's working hard getting it in there. This just shows some of the uh, selection managers that we have from the asset data warehouse. So we have a location manager so we can uh, select assets by a form or by a map and it presents it by route and shows the features and the attributes. We have a feature manager which will present all the asset features to the selected route and the location selected manager and it will present the assets by mile point and when the uh, user clicks on the feature manager the, uh, the map will auto zoom for us. We have an attribute information manager for the record selected, the feature manager. Information can be updated and modified and then saved. Which is, which is important so that we can, you know, make changes on the fly. Um, we have the editing tools so we can add data, move data, delete data, um, update location. Uh, some of the future enhancements we're trying to get are, are some reporting modules where we have some regular canned reports as well as customizable reports. We can do custom queries. Um, we're going to integrate it with the established systems as we said before. Trying to get some maintenance records in there put the condition assessments in there as well as develop some mobile applications. All of this is going to be tied to our enterprise GIS system which is to add value to the asset management. Uh, this is going to promote collab collaboration, dissemination of the information and coordination. So with the collaboration we'll, we'll integrate the, uh, the databases of the data rich offices. Um, 
And the data owners, that what, how this is going to re really add value to us is the data owners are going to maintain the information. So the bridge guys are going to continue to collect and update their data the way they've always been doing it. They really don't have to uh, make a change to the way they've done business, which is good because the director of our bridge program, his name is uh, Jock Friedman, Earl Friedman, he's been there for 50-some years, 55 years, so I don't think he's going to change the way he's been doing business. <laughs> Um, the dissemination, we're able to reach a large GIS customer database, so we don't have to, and we won't have to worry about the software licenses. Um, and the coordination, so the data-driven decisions we've made in real time, and the data will be uh, sustainable, and the system will be easily maintained. So here's just some slides about the asset data warehouse. So if we were in the, the highway lighting editor, we can look a, a we can look up all the lighting on a, a particular corridor of roads. We can, then, we can then coordinate with pavement on upcoming projects. So here you can see if we have a lighting project, we can say, okay, well, what, uh, what Fund 77 is our pavement program. But we can come out here and say, okay, we want to do some lighting work. Well, what paving projects do we have here in FY13? And we can say, okay, well, we're going to be resurfacing pro uh, Maryland, was it 45, in FY13. We can then take a look and say, okay, do we have any crash data out there? And we'll show that there's a couple, uh, two severe crashes at this intersection. So then we can integrate or initiate a traffic study. We can also look and see are the sidewalks and the driveway crossings compliant. Here we see that for this area, there's two sidewalks of noncompliance, two missing sidewalks and five driveway crossings not compliant. Um, and so we can hopefully utilize the uh, resurfacing project to make them compliant. Now, we have our money siloed too and for different programs. We have money for pavement and bridges. One of the challenges that we're facing is to try to get, say, a pavement project, say a $5 million pavement project to incorporate some sidewalk improvements, which might only be a very small percentage. Uh, so we, we have to work together and we have to really collaborate to try to get some synergies out there. Um, and I think it's coming. We're able to check and see what assets are possibly affected by uh, climate change. Um, you know, do we need to look at possibly raising a road or, or raising the profile of a road? Um, we're also able, and I don't know if most people have VISI data, but we have uh, this VISI data, so we're able to take a closer look and access the video and drive the road. This has been very helpful for me um, working with the CTP. I'm a visual person, so when I see a project in our CTP, I take a look and try to get a, a, a sense for what this project actually looks like. Um, you're also able to link to photos stored in the structures database as well as uh, plan sheets. So you can actually highlight an area, open it up, take a look at take a look at the uh, the photos of the structure and you can also click on a button and it'll take you to the actual plan sheets for that area so there's some pretty interesting things that are happening right now um, at Maryland one of the things that we don't do is the asset management program is housed under program development and I think one of the other areas they actually some Pennsylvania you're the division chief and you have an asset management group um, it's one of the notes I made that I'm going to go back and say, like, you know, if we're really committed to this, we really should have a, a full group or a full division devoted to that. So I, I thought that was good. Um, so that's what we're doing at Maryland. 